Hi. Hi. Are you sure this course is just for two four nine nine? Yes, and you know this is the only course with this expertise across the world. No way. Yes way. Don't delay. Enroll now. Geeks learning together. Hi. Hi. Are you sure you can prepare for product based companies through this course? Yes, sitting at home? No way. Yes way. Don't delay. Enroll now. Geeks learning together. Hey, hi everyone. Welcome to day 22nd of our learn and earn series. And quickly in the chat section, uh, please let me know if my voice is clearly audible and if my screen is visible. Yeah. Okay, so hi Shubham, hi Meshkat, hi Adarsh. Thanks Shubham for letting me know. Let's just wait for a few more minutes. Our other friends shall be joining us and then we will start our today's session. Thanks Kasak. Thanks Meshkat for confirming. So how are you all guys doing today? What is the maximum streak that we have? It is day 22nd, right? So amazing work. Great Sachin, great Shubham. That's the maximum streak. Nice. And also in the Discord channel, I was checking like you guys keep on updating the streaks and also you guys are like very much active there as well. That's very good to see. Let's just give some time. Yes, today it was. No, I didn't give it. What about you? So like you guys are actively participating in all the, you know, all the streams. Like, yeah, that's a very good thing. Keep on practicing, you know. Uh, this will definitely lead to good results. That's great, Shubham. Okay, so uh, give me a quick plus one if everything is all right from my side and we are good to go to start our today's session. I'm waiting for the confirmation. If I can just have a quick plus one from you all so that I can know that we are good to start our today's session. OK, thanks, Sachin. Thanks, Shubham. Thanks, Mishkat. All right, so let us start. So yeah, this is our first question of the day. And the question is, reverse a linked list in groups of given size. All right, uh, we have done the question of reversing the linked list, right? Uh, if you can please confirm me that. The question of reversing the linked list is done by us, right? In one of our previous sessions. Okay, so uh, this uh, today's question is, we have to reverse a linked list, but in the groups of given size, okay? So it is that uh, given a linked list of size n, the task is to reverse every k nodes, all right, where k is an input to the function in the linked list. And if the number of nodes is not a multiple of k, then left out nodes in the n should be considered as a group and must be reversed. Okay, so, okay, let us understand with the example. We have a linked list here that is 1, 2, 2, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay, so just give me a second. I will just put question in the banner. 
Okay, and I will just share the question link with you all. Yes, I was just about to share it. Yes, I'm uh, explaining the question like this. I'm explaining it with the help of an example that will be more efficient. Okay, so one, two, two, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it is one, two, two, four, five, six. Hey, good evening, Shishir. Seven. And okay, let it be till seven. Okay, so uh, this is the link list that is given to us, and we are being given that the value of k is four. All right. Okay, so uh, back uh, value of k is given as four. Now see, it is written that a uh, link list is. Uh, we have to reverse it in size of k. Okay, as you can see, the output is four. First of all, uh, the k is four. We will take the first four nodes and we will reverse it. So it will be four, two, two, one. Clear. Next, see here we are not having four nodes. So they have said that in case the four nodes are not present, so we will be just reversing the left out nodes. Okay, we will simply reverse it. It will be seven, six, five. Okay, let us take another example. That is one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so okay, thanks, Shishir. Uh, that's nice to hear that uh, we are covering this question and it's of help to you. We hope after this session you'll be able to solve this question. And see, the next example is one, two, three, four, five. All right, and the output is three, two, one. Okay, k first of all is given as three. Okay, so now you tell me if we reverse the first three nodes, what will be the output? After reversing first three nodes, what is the output that we are going to get? Three, two, one. Great. Now. Yes, that's the right answer, Shubham and Sachin. Now, all right, uh, we are not having three nodes here, right? So what we shall do now? Yes, Shishir, that's the right answer. OK, so we are uh, we are left with only two nodes, but we have to reverse it in group of three. So what we shall be doing now? What will be the output now? Great Chaman, it will be 5, 4. Because as the question statement reads that if at the end we are having uh, the length that is less than k, in that case, we will just reverse the remaining nodes. All right? Yes, Shubham, that's the right output. So, okay, is the question and examples clear to you all? Let me know in the chat section if any difficulties, then I shall be explaining again. Great, that's nice to hear. Everyone else, is everything going fine till now? All right, that's very good to hear. Okay, so we just saw that what we are doing is we are taking uh, k is equal to 3, first of all. We are taking a k number of nodes, all right, and then we are reversing it. For the next iteration, we will again take k number of nodes and we will reverse it. Then again, k number of nodes and we will reverse it. Cool. So, uh, we have done this reversing the linked list part, right? So what we will see, linked lists are game of pointers, OK? So what we were doing in that uh, reversing linked list was exactly, let me show you. OK. As I said, linked lists are just game of pointers, right? What we need to do, we have a, no, we don't need to swap nodes like, See, doing swapping k number of times, uh, like reversing, can be done with the help of swapping. But uh, in the linked list case, that's not a very clever idea. Swapping works well with arrays. But if we are at linked list, it is better to just change the pointers, right? See, here the pointers are like this initially. Is it clear? Initially, our pointers are like this, OK? Now see, what 
P2 while reversing it. Yeah, okay. Great. So while reversing it, what we do, we have a previous pointer, which points to null. Then we have a current pointer, which points to the current node. It is head. And then we have a next pointer, right? These three pointers we have. Now say for now, previous pointer is here. The current pointer is here. And we will, uh, yes, exactly, Nikus. We will just solve for the first K node. And then we will recursively call it for the rest part, right? Now for the first K node, what we need to solve? Tell me, what is the first step? Like what exactly do we need to solve for the first K nodes? That's the very correct intuition. And I'm very happy to see that. Tell me, what do we need to do for the first A nodes? Like, what are we doing? Like, what is the question? Exactly, we will just reverse it. Reverse, then call for next. Exactly. OK, so in reverse, what happens? Simply, we will just write the code for reversing, all right? We have previous, we have current, and we have next, OK? So say this is our previous pointer, this is our current pointer, and this is our next pointer. Now, while reversing, what we do is we just change the pointers. So after doing all this, we will mark the current next as previous, OK? This is the new link that we have created. The current next will be marked as previous, all right? And then after that, we will move our previous to this position, new, and current will be moved to this position. Is it clear the three steps that we are doing? Similarly, you know, we will change this pointer. We will change this pointer. So as you can see in this way, the point initially the pointers were here. Now the pointers are here. All right. So the linked list has been reversed. Great. This is just a simple linked list reversing code. All right, so we will just write the code to reverse a linked list. Now tell me how to keep a track that if we have reversed K nodes or not. How we can keep a track for that? That we need exactly need to reverse the K node, not the entire linked list. How we can keep track? I treat Himanshu, the question was that we need to reverse linked list in groups of given size. Like uh, we have done a question of reversing the linked list in which we used to reverse linked list from 1 to 10. But here we have to reverse it in groups. Say if group size is given as 3, then you only have to reverse 3 nodes at a time. Then next 3 nodes, then next 3 nodes, and so on. That's the question. Yes, countdown. OK, all right. So we, we will reverse the linked list. and update a variable CTR. Great. That's right answer. Chaman, Naikaj, and Meshkat. OK. So give me a quick plus one if we are good to iterate, uh, good to go to our coding part. If everything is clear and we are good to start. OK. Thanks, Shubham. Thanks, Naikaj. So let us see what we are going to do in our coding. All right. Let us see. Let us first simply write the code to reverse a linked list. Okay. So you all are going to help me with that because you all have attended the session. So uh, yeah, let me write the base condition first of all. As we are going to use recursion, so the base condition is the most important thing that we have in recursion. All right. Now help me with writing the code to reverse a linked list. We have done that session. So, you know, you guys are going to help me with that. Just tell me. OK, OK. So let me uh, initialize variables as well. We have start previous. It is pointing to null. Then we have 
node star current which is pointing to head and then we have node star next yes reverse link list logic exactly now tell me what is that logic exactly help me to code it yes i will declare ctr first of all let us try to code to reverse the link list okay then we will do the improvisation okay why current is not is equal to null great okay uh chairman i have not declared the count part yet so let us now just focus on reversing the link list and then i will show you the improvisation all right now while current is not is equal to null let me point the next pointer to currents next okay now uh, where should the current be pointing currents next should be pointing to sorry currents next will be what Currents next will be is equal to what? Help me with this. Great. Thanks, everyone. Currents next will be is equal to previous. Now, uh, after this, where will previous will point? Yes, everyone, that's the right answer. Where will previous point now? We will just shift it a step ahead. So, what was after previous? Which pointer is after the previous? Like, see. Yes, exactly. Previous will point to current because as we can see, previous, current, and then we have next pointer. Okay. So, previous will point to current. And what next? Current will point to next. Okay. We have just shifted them to its next pointer, to their next pointer. All right. So, current is pointing to next. Great. Thanks, everyone. Now, uh, what we usually do, we just return the previous. All right. Now, this is the code just to reverse the link list. Is this code clear to you all? Yes. Thanks, Nikesh. Thanks, Shaman. Is this code clear to you all to reverse the link list? Great. Now tell me what are the improvisations that we should do because we need to return it in group of size k. First of all, we will declare a variable. Now, while that variable size is less than k and here we will be doing k plus plus. In interviews, they may ask like, you know, like they want to see how you are able to build up a logic. So, you know, just and actually see the main reason behind making you solve a question is to develop the intuition for the question. Maybe they will not ask the same question, but they can ask something which is based on this. Right. Like, for example, binary search. All right. That seems such a easy concept. I mean, it's a very easy concept, binary search. But yesterday we did a question. Um, yeah. Thanks, Shaman. Yesterday, we did a question of allocate minimum number of pages and that used the application of binary search, right? So that is how the things are. You know, you just need to have intuition. You need to develop the logic. Okay. Then we will check if next pointer is still there. Then we will be writing heads next as Rewards, it will be called with next and the value of key. All right. Are these uh, new steps that we have added for the size of k? Is this clear? We don't expect standard questions in interview. Yes, we don't, but we must be prepared for it as well because see doing this one question that does not mean that you are now able to do this only one question now you can do all the questions that are related to this right that are based on this concept right so that's why you should always know you know what are the standard questions so knowing standard questions is always a plus point right all right so give me a quick plus one if this question is clear to you all
great thanks so let us start with our next question of the day which is permutations of a given string okay so before starting this tell me if a string is of okay abhijit the recursion part is c uh, first of all we have written the code just to uh, reverse our linked list all right for recursion part what we are doing is we are checking that if the head uh, like if the next pointer is there or not c every time the next pointer will point to the end node all right it is pointing here so if the next pointer is still there only then you will go to the next iteration right suppose your next pointer is here all right if it is here then there is no point to start the next iteration all right so if next pointer is not pointing to a null that means we have not reached to the end of our linked list right so uh, if we haven't reached till the end only then you will recur right there is no any point of recurring for uh, empty linked list right yes nikers you are right the time complexity is n into k okay abhijit is it clear so that's why we are checking that if the linked list is still having nodes and if it is having then we are reversing it for its next part right and uh, the previous pointer to it will be heads next okay so that's we are that is what we are doing in the recursion part are these things clear great uh, let us move to our next question that is permutations of given string all right guys first of all tell me uh, if a string is of say size n then how many permutations will it have yeah thanks shubham all right let us see this is i guess class 9th question because in class 9 we first time were introduced to permutations and combinations right we used to rearrange strings and all let me see what other people are saying so yeah i want everyone to answer this sure the link to the question actually i have shared it in the discord channel as well but yeah uh, as the links are not in the post description so you guys might be facing difficulty with it okay all right n factorial okay so we have three n factorial here so let us say n factorial is the winner so yeah that's the right answer if the size of the string is n then total number of permutations that it is having is n factorial right so see the question statement reads as we are given a string s and the task is to print all the unique permutations of the string in lexicographically sorted order all right all right see currently i am coding in c++ cool the java code will be given to you in the discord channel if that is required okay all right so uh, let us see the example say if first example we have abc okay see how we are going to do this this is a backtrack question okay so it will help you to understand the concepts of backtracking see this is the string that we have currently which is abc okay we need to okay first of all tell me how many permutations will it have how many permutations will this string have great that is 3 factorial 6 now listen carefully how are we going to find all the permutations yes everyone vivek chaman nikhil smeshka that's the right answer now see as a first step what we are doing is let us say we will swap a initially with a all right then with b and then with c all right what we are doing is we are swapping the first character we will do do it like continuously like this okay we will keep on swapping our current character 
with all of its character, all the characters that are present inside the string. All right. Now let us say we have swapped a with. Uh, let us say we have swapped a with a only. Okay. So what will that be? If you are swapping a with a only, what will be the new string? Let us say we have swapped a with a only. So what will be? Yeah. A B C. Now say, I have swapped A with B. What will I get now? Yes, great everyone. That's the right answer. Now say I have swapped A with B. What will I get now? B A C. Great. And now let us say I have swapped A with C. What will I get now? A has been swapped with C. Great, everyone. You all are answering completely right. I'm very happy to see that. Great. So we are going to get here CBA. See, what we are doing is we are picking up one character. Okay. And then we are swapping it uh, from, you know, zero to the size of the string. Right. This is what we are doing. Now, let us say this first. Initially, none of the characters were fixed. Now, let us see this first position we have fixed, okay? Because uh, we have done the swapping of the first character, okay? So, let me use a different color. Okay, so swapping of first character has been done. So, say this position I have fixed, okay? Because the first character has been swapped. Okay. Now, tell me. Uh, let us use a different color. Okay. Now, tell me A is fixed, okay? A is completely fixed. So what will I get when I swap B with B? Okay, now I'm doing, I'm starting my swapping from B. Here I have started my swapping from A. Now I'm starting swapping from B, okay? So what will I get if I swap B with B? A, B, C, great. And what will I get if I swap B with C? ACB great. All right, guys, that's the correct answer. Now tell me, B is fixed, okay? After swapping, okay, I will not tell which string I'm going to swap. Tell me the two possible strings that we are going to get here. Yes, we make Nike, Chaman, that's absolutely right answer. Tell me what are the two string values that we are going to get here? B, A, C, right? And the second one, B, C, A. Great, Meshka, that's the right answer. All right. Great, Nigel, great, Vivek. Good job. All right. So now tell me. Yes, Shaman, that's the right answer. I think we should shift a bit. Okay, what will be the strings now? Nice, Shubham, you have written a one-liner. That's nice. Okay, so here we will have CBA and C, A, B. Okay. Now, first character was fixed. Now, let us say now we are going to fix these two characters. Okay. Because these two characters have been used for swapping. All right. These two characters are fixed. Let me mark it in green. All right. So, now tell me, after fixing these two characters, you are going to swap C with C itself. So, it will need the same string. Right, swapping C with C itself will obviously give us the same string. So it means that we have reached to the end point. We have done all the permutations, and these are all the permutations of our string. Did you know how we decided that we have reached to end point? If I is now is equal to size of the string minus one. All right, I has reached here. Initially, the I was here, then here, and now I is here. So if I is reaching at S dot size minus one, then that's the termination condition. Is this clear? Okay, guys, give me a quick plus one if the thing is perfectly crystal clear to you all. And, you know, you guys only help me to form all the permutations. So I hope this is clear. And also give me a quick plus one if we can move to our coding part. Great. Thanks, Vivek. Thanks, Shubham. Yes, that's the base case, Nikesh. 
you are completely right because we are using recursion okay thanks chaman yes they are asking unique permutations for that we have a command this say this is our answer vector okay i will just complete this so we have this stl command all right you can use this to erase all the uh, you know repetitive elements yes you can use set as well that's also an option and also as they have asked the answer to be in lexicographically ordered so we will be using sort function as well to sort the answers clear so yeah give me a quick plus one if we are good to start with our coding or if still any doubt then please ask i will be very happy to clear it out yes sort all right guys okay we are discussing sort here can anyone tell me this sort function which sort function does this exactly use like we have so many sorts right we have merge sort we have heap sort quick sort bubble sort selection insertion heap like so many sorts we have so this sort function uses which sort merge all right let us see if we have any other answers let us see if we get any correct answers here this sort is using with sort function this is stl sort all right confusion in merge or quick quick sort chaman okay quick sort combination of quick and merge or maybe hybrid sort okay yes shagun you are saying quick sort yes the time complexity of merge sort is n log n but that is so for heap and that is so for quick all right guys so uh, this is your task for today i want you all to figure it out what is the sort function that is used in this stl sort okay it is not merge it is not quick sort or it is not insertion sort i want you all to find out the correct answer and then we shall discuss it tomorrow okay actually see when we have that's a, you know combination of sorts it is using uh, one of you have said it but i want you all to figure out what are the sorts exactly it is using okay all right let us move to our coding part okay how easily we use the sort function right i mean whenever there is anything we just use this sort and so we should be knowing that what sort function inside it is implementing right let's say this is my answer vector and now let me call the permutation for my string i will start it with zero and i will pass this i will write on address in terms of me in terms of that okay and as we need to have our answer in sorted order so we will just sort it okay and also we need to have okay how many of you are here new to this uh, unique function how many of you here filter of sort that's nice bhavish i am very ha happy to see the answer okay can you tell me what combinations does it use all right so we all are new to this unique function so yeah uh, you know we just discovered something new here which will save us some extra time what it does is it just erases all the duplicate elements right so rather than using set which will take some more time what we can do is you can apply this unique function on your vector itself okay yes see set can take some time right so let us just use this unique function because we have already exhausted some time when we uh, sorted our vector so that's why now let us see let us say i have this function okay this recursive function where i am passing my string i am passing the current index to it and i am passing the answer vector all right so guys tell me what is the base condition you are most welcome nikesh 
so you know in every question there is something which you get to learn so try to do all the questions okay so bhavishya is saying us that heap sort insertion sort and quick sort oh, okay but you are not confirmed so i want to confirm answer to this that's your task for tomorrow okay index passes string uh, what will be the base condition in which condition shall i uh, terminate this function if okay great bhavishya just check it out and then let us know in tomorrow session we are using rest dot erase to erase the duplicate elements Yes, so see, as we just, okay, uh, let me show you the example. When did this termination stop? When did we, uh, the i, idx is here, okay? So we stopped when idx value reached here. We stopped in this condition, right? So what is this position? What is this position called with respect to the size of the string? See, uh, the condition restart unique is to just keep the unique elements and to erase the duplicate elements right unique command to keep unique erase command to delete uh, duplicates because we just don't want to you know find out how many unique elements are there we want to erase them as well okay so guys tell me what is this position with respect to string size Tell me, I mean, just, you know, just the size of what is this position? That's a very common. Thanks. S dot size minus one. Is everyone able to uh, figure it out? Yes, exactly. So if IDX is, is equal to s dot size minus one it means we shall be pushing it in our answer vector right and just we will hit on it now what to do if we are in s case great that's our base condition now let us see what we are going to do in our s case so we are always starting from say idx that idx should be less than s dot size all right how just just i'm quoting it just exactly what we saw in the dry run all right and then we will do i plus plus okay. so we will just swap we were swapping right asset idx and asset i is this clear what we were doing exactly in the yes that's recursion and backtrack very good then we will call this recursion for s ibx and res but we will like for next ibx it will be getting called and then we will again swap it to restore to its position this is backtrack okay all right so see this is the swapping part okay that i have just demonstrated and this is the recursion part Yes, again we swap. Very good, Nikrits. Very good. This is the recursion part, and this is the backtrack part. Okay. And then after writing all this, we will simply do our return. Let us see if we have got the right answer. Uh oh, that's the. Runtime error, guys. Let us see what we did wrong. I plus one in play. Sorry, which line number? All right, here it will not be IDX, here it will be I. No, 
no that will be idx plus 1 only because i we are implement uh, i we are incrementing here okay so that will be I, idx plus 1 only line number 20 actually the error was here here i have written idx less than s dot size whereas it should be i less than s dot size right all right guys is this code clear give me a quick thumbs up let me yeah see the code carefully now there is no rushing try to analyze it if any part is not clear yes but these five test cases are enough to you know check it and okay if this is uh, not suiting you we will try to add more test cases here all right we will add more test cases so like, yeah, I'll look into this code carefully, you know, just read each of the lines. If any doubt, please do let me know. Yeah, Ritesh, we are using uh, Erase and Unique because that's what the question demands from us. It wants us to uh, have only distinct permutations, right? We don't want any repetitions. So that's why Erase and Unique. This command will do that. What does this command do? It deletes duplicate elements. Wait, thanks, Shubham. Thanks, Shaman. All right. Um, okay, so this was a permutation, and as we needed answer it in lexicographically sorted order, I want you all to write your name in a sorted order and just post it quickly in the chat section, everyone. Let us see who have got the most interesting name. Like just sort your name, apply the sort function there and post it in the chat section. All right, Naikaj, I will just zoom it. No issues. Let me increase the pixel size, okay? And uh, let me know if this works or else I will share the code link with you. Welcome, Ritesh. Let me know, Naikaj, if this is clear now. Okay, so we have a string here, A, B, S, H, M, S, U. Is this sorted? Okay, it is sorted, right. It, it is not leading to any meaning, right? What we can do. Okay, so everyone, I want you all to, you know, apply the sort function on your name. And yes, use sort function to sort your name. Yes, exactly. Okay, so we have Afiz here. Okay, yeah, that's that looks like a nice name. Any more new interesting names we have? Yes, you can do it in any of the languages, whatever suits you. The logic is the important part. Languages are just a medium to code. All right. Okay, so that's very complicated, Ritesh. Oh, okay, you applied the sort function. Okay, that's great. All right, so we have some complicated names here as well. Any more names do we have? Okay, we have Akish. That's an easy name that I mean, easy to pronounce at least. Anaikaj, I guess you forgot one letter. Yeah. All right, guys. So that was a very. OK, so we have got really complicated names after sorting. All right. OK, so give me a quick plus one if you are good to start with our next question. OK, that's a very nice name. Yeah, it looks like Hollywood names, you know, maybe some of these can be get featured in films. <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, it was very nice to know, uh, you know, this sort function on your names. If I can just apply on mine as well, I don't know what it will be. I guess it will be more like, let me try. It will be Okay, so it is S U N I T I, and then if we, I will come first, and then we have N S T D. 
so this is my all right guys so we have done enough for today so we are having you know plenty of new names today let us see if it gets used somewhere okay good to start with our next question give me a quick plus one Great, thanks, Shubham. Okay, so the question statement is okay, and let me do a few things before we start. Thanks, Shaman. Thanks, Sachin. Yes, Vivek, you can keep it after sorting whatever you are getting. Maybe you can keep that, or maybe you can put it in reverse order, or maybe you can reverse it in group of K. Whatever name you are getting is most interesting, you can keep that. Okay, so the question statement is we are okay. The question link as well. Let's share it. Great. So the question statement reads as we are given an array of size and having elements, and the task is to find the next greater element for uh, each element of the array in order of their appearance. Yeah, Shubham, I have shared it in the Discord channel as well. But uh, maybe the question links are not in the description. So maybe I guess there's this thing. All right. So next greater element of an element in the array is the nearest element on the right, which is greater than the current element. OK, so the statement is clear. And if there does not exist next greater of current element, then next greater element for current element is minus one. Okay, and before that, I just forgot to tell you all, please give a quick thumbs up on this video. Everyone who's watching this, please do that. Um, I want the likes to be equal to the number of students who are currently watching this. All right, so please also do give a quick thumbs up here. All right, so okay. Let us now see uh, with the help of examples what the question statement is demanding. Okay, so see, this is one, two, three, four. Okay, so this is very obvious. What is the next element for one? Answer vector. All right, what is the next? What is the uh, thanks, Nikas? What is the next greater element for one? Two. Okay. Next greater element for two? Next greater element for two, what we have? Greater. All right. It should not be equal than it. It should be greater. Next greater element for three? Yes. Greater uh, one. Next greater element for three? Yes, when you go pal, you are completely right. We can solve this. Or we can solve this using a brute force approach as well, but that's not a clever idea. Yes, four. And next greater element for four. Yes, Nikers, that's the best case. All right, thanks, Shubham. It will be minus one because if there is no any greater element, then we are going to return minus one. Okay, uh, this example was very... Um, small and not very explanatory let me take another example six eight zero one three okay this example seems nice to me all right so this is my answer vector now tell me how many elements five okay next greater element for six Quickly, guys, quickly in the chat section, let me know what is the next greater element we have for 6. 8. Great. Next for 8, the next greater element for 8. Yes, thanks, Meshkat, Shubham, Abhishek, Sachin. That's the right answer. Minus 1. Okay, so all of you saying minus one, congratulations. All of you are correct. Next greater element for zero is one. Let us not waste time here. Next greater element for one is three. 
and of course for last element it will always be minus one so is the question statement and examples clear to you all are we clear on this part yes okay we are clear so let us now walk towards our approach so first approach of course is going to be the brute force so the brute force approach will be what just pick one index value say we have one two three four five six seven and we will pick this index value for i and we will start j from this point and then we will check if we are getting any j greater than i or not okay the first element that we will be getting greater than this we will break the loop is the brute force approach clear that was not much of the logic it is going to cost us n square is this brute force approach clear great now let us see our second approach we are going to do this question with the help of any idea which data structure we are going to use Stack. Great. Sachin, we are going to use stack. Now, let me show how stack is going to help us. We had 6, 8, 0, 1, 3. All right. Let us say I am having an empty stack initially. Okay. Yes. Great, Chaman, Nikers. That's the right answer. So, this is my stack, which is currently empty. Okay, which principle does stack use? Quickly, guys. Stack works on which principle? What is the order of in and out for the stack? Leave for great. Great, everyone. That's perfectly right answer. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I will start my iteration from the end. Okay, see, this is my answer vector of size 5. Okay, I will start my iteration from end. All right, so currently my i is here. Okay, is my stack empty? What I'm doing is if stack is empty, I will push minus 1 inside my vector. All right, so is my stack empty? Initially, I have started my i from here. All right, so is my stack empty? All right, so let, let us say I will push minus one here, okay, because stack is empty. Great. Now, and I will be pushing three inside my stack. Say three got added to my stack. Great. Now, let us say i is here. Now, when my i is here, is my stack empty? When my i is at this point, is my stack empty? No, my stack is not empty. So, this condition is not going to work here. So, let us say, uh, let us find out what we are doing if this is not the case. So, if stack is not empty, then if stack dot top is greater than array of i, we will push back stack dot top. Is this concept clear? See, if the top element, if the stack is not empty, right, we will check that if the top element is greater than the current element or not. And if it is greater, then it means that we have a greater element to the right of the current element. What I said that if the current stack element is greater than this, okay, current i, it means that uh, we have a next greater element to the right of i. Is this concept clear? This second condition. Yes, exactly. Top of elements of i, then it's next greater element, okay, because we are traversing from the end. Okay, so if this element is greater than it, it means that it lies to its right. Okay, 
So is this second condition clear if stack dot top is greater than array of i? Then we will push back. Okay, great, Pooja. So is stack dot top is greater than array of i? Is is this second condition getting satisfied here? Let me know. Okay, great, everyone. So second condition is getting satisfied. So what we will do? We will push it. Okay, st dot top, and we will add one to our current stack. Okay, we need to add the current elements. Now let us say our i is here. Okay, so when my i is here. First, uh, which condition is it satisfying? First or second? My i is at zero, and tell me what shall I push back in my answer vector as well? When my i is at zero, which condition is getting satisfied? Second condition. Okay. Do we have any more answers? first condition all right such so in the first condition is if stack is empty i don't think our stack is empty yes great shagun that's the second condition so the second condition is getting satisfied everyone agrees to this because stack dot top which is one that is greater than zero okay so what are we if a second condition is getting satisfied so what are we going to add in our answer vector Yeah, okay, okay. So one will be added to answer. All right. So we are going to add stack dot top and we will push zero inside our stack. Great. Everything clear? Now let us go to our next condition. Now let us say my i is here. Which condition is getting satisfied? First condition or second condition? None. Second condition. All right, Sachin. Maybe you should reconsider your answer. Nikaj. Okay, second condition. Second condition. Okay, Shagun is saying none. All right, so for those who are saying second condition, second condition is if stack dot top is greater than array of i. Is it the case? Is 0 greater than 8? Is 0 greater than 8? Great. So, which means that none of these conditions are satisfied. Clear? So, let us now write a new condition. Okay. So, what does this new condition is? If none of these conditions is satisfied, then what are we going to do is we will simply empty our stack. Yes, we pop out. Very good, Venu Gopal. We will pop out. Now, what will be the end condition for this popping out? Yes, we will pop it. But till which point do we see? If you say you are you have popped zero, is one greater than eight? No. We will pop one as well. Is three greater than eight? No. So we will pop three as well. So till which point are we popping? What are the two conditions that we are checking before popping out the elements? The stack should not be empty. And stack dot top should be less than array of i or is equal to. Are these two conditions clear? when we are emptying our stack are these two conditions clear to you all let me quickly know in the chat section and if any doubts do ask i will explain again how we are popping out the elements from the stack see none of the two conditions were satisfied so we needed to come up with a new condition and this is our new condition that the stack should not be empty and the top of the stack should be less than array of i. All right. So let us say if stack has become empty. Okay. So let us say while we are popping out the stack, stack has been empty. So now what you will push back in the vector, the stack is empty now. 
Yes, when you go Paul, that's the right answer. Let us say while popping the elements, which just happened in this case, the stack has been empty. Okay. So now if the stack is empty, what you are going to push inside exactly? Navina, that's the right answer. We will put minus one if stack is empty. Now tell me if stack is not empty. And if we encounter an element which is greater than array of i, let us say suppose this has been nine. Okay. Then what are we what would we have pushed inside our answer vector? Let us say if stack dot top is greater than array of i. Stack dot top is greater than array of i. Ht dot top great. And we will not pop it. Okay. If this would have been nine here, then we would have not popped it. And nine would have been the next greater element for eight. Okay. But here as the stack has been empty, so we will have to write minus one here. Okay. So this will be minus one. And we will push eight. Let me empty my stack. So now my stack contains eight only, okay? Great. Now let us say i is at this point. When i is here, which of the condition is getting satisfied? First, second, or third? When i is at six. Second condition, great. So what shall we push inside our answer vector? Yeah. Eight, great guys. So I think we are now very much comfortable with this code, with this algorithm. Let me quickly know in the chat section. See, we have completed our process. And one last thing that we need to do is, what is that thing? We have done all the iteration. And then one last thing that we need to do is, come on, you guys know the answer. The one last thing. Yes, great, Nikers. I'm very happy to see the excitement. Yes, Sachin, we need to reverse our Jess. Yes, great, Shubham. That is of linear time complexity and space complexity as well. We will reverse it. Okay. So, guys, give me a quick plus one. Yes, great, Shubham. That's the right answer. Okay, guys, give me a quick plus one if we are good to start with our coding. These are the three conditions that we are following, and then we will just reverse it. Thanks for the compliment. Great. No, see, if you are using vector, then, you know, uh, popping out from back and then pushing is vector can be used. But for removing the elements, all right, that can be done. All right, let us now move to the coding part. See, there can be various approaches. You can use any of the approaches that suits you. Okay, so let me help with this coding. So we have vector, long, long rest. And guys, what is the range for long data type? Let me know. You know why these standard questions are important. What is the range of the long data type? We have our stack as empty. We will, okay. We will be simply pushing back. Minus one, yes. Else if stack dot top is greater than the current element, then we can simply push back the top of the stack 
and then okay let me give a proper spacing okay all right now what is that else condition that we have come on tell me what is else condition that we have while we are popping out element from the stack okay nice shivam that's a good point you are using python but i think uh, C++ is great because it's a, it has, you know, lots of STL that can help you in CP. Anyways, that's a preference that may matter, that may vary from person to person. Pop. Okay, so what is the termination condition of pop? There was a termination, right? There is a certain limit for the popping. And I hope all of you have given a thumbs up to this video everyone who's watching you know that's a great motivation kind of a thing so just please give a thumbs up everyone who's watching this video okay great shubham i'm very happy to see you have so clear aim in your life all right uh, first of all help me out here guys i'm just kind of stuck what is the termination condition for stack while okay, why there is no any answer to this were we clear on that part the termination condition for stack st.md okay great shagun that's right answer so while our stack is not empty and the top of the stack is less than or is equal to array of i we will simply pop it okay now after popping say stack has been empty okay so if stack is empty then what we are going to push back in our rest vector yes thanks everyone for helping me out all of you have given the correct answer now let us say if stack has been empty so what are we going to put i mean push back Great, Shagun, that's the right answer. We will push back minus one. Or in else condition, what are we going to push? Great, Shagun, that's the right answer. What are we going to push in the rest condition? Uh, I mean, in else condition. Great Nikes for giving us this logic. Great st.com. All right, let us reverse. Let me just shift it a little bit. Okay. My minus one. If the stack is not empty, then it means we have encountered an element which is greater than the current element, all right? Okay, so one statement I haven't written in this code. And what is that statement? I want you all to figure it out. One statement I have skipped. In which line number, which new statement is needed to get add? Tell me. Let us check how carefully we have been coding. There's one thing that I have missed. Great, Sachin. I'm very happy to see you noticed. So we need to push the elements in array of i. OK, let us see how much nice we have performed okay. seems like correct answer to me reverse has been done great guys we have solved this problem successfully now okay let me know if any doubts any queries for this question and uh, quickly in the chat section, let me know the time complexity and space complexity as well.
time complexity and space complexity for this question. I guess it's pretty easier. Great, Shubham. Very happy to see the answer. Great, Abhishek. That's right answer, Sachin. Okay, Chaman, that's right answer. All right. So we are all clear on this part. Great. Now tell me the all three questions that we have discussed today. How was it? And like any queries, thanks, Shubham, for the compliment. Any queries, any confusion in all the three questions that we did today? Let me know in the chat section. And like also the feedbacks for the session. Anything for this session? Thanks, Neha, for the compliment. Thanks, Shubham. All right. So uh, the homework questions will be shared with you all in the Discord channel and maintain the streak. I'm really very much amazed by the streaks that you guys are maintaining and flooding the Discord with your, you know, the questions that you have solved. That's very good to see that, you know, very nice to see the motivation that you all are having. And I hope everyone is accessing this SD sheet. Thanks, Prince. Keep on solving the questions from the SD sheet. And if any queries, you can ask in the Discord channel as well. Thanks, Aditya. We will be very much happy to help you all. Stay active, you know, keep practicing, stay consistent, keep doing the hard work, which you guys are already doing. So that's a very good thing. All right, guys. So uh, by the end of the session, maybe you can, uh, by the end of the series, you can accept all these things. All right. Uh, nice, Neha. That's nice to hear. All right, guys. So that is all about our today's session. Good night. See you all tomorrow. And yeah, bye, everyone.